This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to the video quick tip. In this quick tip video, I want to share with you guys how I created this topographic map within After Effects. It is a fully procedural texture right here, fully animatable, fully customizable. And it's pretty cool because this type of texture is very, very popular in motion design and illustration. Basically, people use it for backgrounds and animated textures and whatnot, so it's pretty cool. And you'll be able to use the techniques that you learn in this video tutorial to kind of create other animatable textures within After Effects. So it's pretty cool here. So in the second example that I created right here, it has a little bit more detail right here. So it's pretty cool. Um, I made some controls right here, which I may turn into a pseudo effect. So I'm not quite sure yet, but if that's up, it will be available as a preset in the description down below. So it's pretty cool here. Let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm not sure how accurate these topographic maps are, um, but you know, I'm not a geologist, so you know, it's just for the look here. So let's go ahead and create a new comp here. We'll call this tutorial comp. Go ahead and hit okay. And so let's go ahead and create a new background. Create a new solid, call it BG. I'm gonna make it this kind of like this pinkish color right here, just for demonstration purposes. And we'll go ahead and create a new solid right here. And this is gonna be the actual uh, topographic map right here. So topographic. Uh, map right here. You know, I'll just make it black in this case and we'll go ahead and hit OK. So we have our background, we have our map right here. Let's go ahead and add a few effects to the map layer right here. So I'm going to add a lot of effects in here and I'll walk you through pretty much um, what everything does in the effect stack. For now, I'm just going to apply it right now. So I'm going to apply a fractal noise. This is the most powerful effect according to Andrew Kramer and I agree with him. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with this. And we're gonna be using the fractal noise effect to drive the whole effect right here. So we'll add a fractal noise. We'll go in and apply a levels um, because people don't use curves. I'm just kidding, I, I always use curves. Um, but for in this case, the level is a lot easier to use. We'll also apply a shift channels, drag it to the effect stack right here. We'll apply a simple choker, drag it underneath the shift channels right here. And we'll apply an extract effect under key. And lastly, we'll apply a fill effect under generate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all these effects right here. We're, we're gonna work through one at a time to kind of see the look that we're kind of creating here. So here we have the fractal noise. It generates a black and white noise map right here. And so what I wanna do is I want to increase the contrast. And so as you can see, we're gonna use the black and white values right here to generate our topographic map right here. So I'm also going to decrease the complexity to like 1.5 or so. So it give us less details right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and play around with the brightness here. So we can think of it, pretty much all the black areas are going to be um, pretty much transparent. And all the white areas that you see here are going to be our land mass. And we can go to transform, we can play around with the scale a little bit, just to make it a little bit bigger right here. And so the joy of it all is that you can pretty much play around with the fractals, right? So this is the basic fractal. You can use like a terrain fractal, which might be more appropriate or maybe like strings or, or, or maybe even like uh, turbulent sharp or basics, you know, whatever. Um, you can create a lot of different type of earth textures using different types of fractals right here. But for now, I'm just gonna use the basic, a fractal type right here in noise type, maybe like a spline or something like that. Uh, maybe soft linear. So we'll stick with soft linear right here. And so the problem is the map looks a little bit soft in the edges right here. So uh, we need to crush that to make it a nice solid edge. And we can do that using the levels effect right here. So I'm gonna grab these two little arrows here. I'm going to pretty much crush the blacks and crush the whites right here, right into the middle, right until you see kind of like a, a sharp little edge that you're kind of happy with. So something like that um, is looking pretty good for me. And so we'll go into the shift channels effect right here, turn that on. And so now we're saying, hey, we have a black and white image, right? But you know, I, I'm not really feeling the black in this background right here. I wanna remove the black background. And so how do we do that? We tell shift channels to say like, look, take the alpha channel from the luminance channel. So use the luminance of this image and kind of use it as a map for the alpha channel. And by doing that, it removes the black completely here. Um, and if you want, you can also invert that and you know, and use the shift channels effect and you can remove the white and so on and so forth. So that's just one quick technique to kind of remove some of the black right there in the background here. 
And so this is really cool. This is kind of what we want. So the white areas are our land masses, right? Um, but I don't want this solid blob right here. I kind of just want an outline of the solid blob. And so you can use a glow, you can use a drop shadow, you can use layer styles. I always find that layer styles are a little bit slower and I like to kind of use effects right here. So I found that a simple choker, which will kind of help smooth everything out as well as give us that nice outline. So instead of choking in a positive direction, which is what we normally do, I'm gonna go ahead and shift and choke the mat in a negative direction. And as you can see, it creates these nice little strokes right here, this black little stroke, because we're kind of expanding the mat right here. So cool, so now we have this little black stroke that we wanna keep. Now we wanna remove the white, right? So there are many ways to remove the white. If you want full transparency, you'll need to kind of play around with the channels here. You can play around with the shift channels effect again, but you might need to pre-compose or something like that. I found that if you just key it out using the extract effect right here, so I'm gonna turn on the extract effect right here. So under the extract effect, what I wanna do is wanna go to the histogram right here, grab this top white handle right here and just pretty much drag it down. And what that does is it's going to choke the white point right here. So you can actually decrease this value right here if this is not working for you, but just go ahead and clamp it a little bit. It's going to remove the white pretty much. Pretty cool like that. And so once we do that, we have our nice little stroke right here. And to colorize this stroke, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a fill effect and change the fill color to like a white. So just like that, you've created kind of your first uh, topograph layer right here. And we can play around with the thickness by changing the simple choker. Maybe something thinner like that. And um, we'll go ahead and play around with the geometry right here. And as you can see, we can play around with the, the map just by playing around with our fractal noise, brightness, and contrast. And so you can create some pretty interesting looks this way, right? So I'm just gonna fine tune just to where I get a little bit more interesting image right here. All right, so now that we have our first map right here, I'm gonna go ahead and create kind of a control right here. So I'm gonna go to a layer new null object. And you'll see why I'm creating a control in a second because we're gonna be duplicating this topographic map a few times right here. So I'm gonna call this control. And uh, let's go ahead and add a few sliders to this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to sliders under expression control. And we'll add a few sliders. We'll add one for maybe the uh, stroke size. We'll go ahead and add another one here for uh, contrast. Add another one here for brightness. And we'll go ahead and add another one here for detail or the complexity. Let's go ahead and add an angle control under expression controls right here. And maybe even a color control. And as you can see, we're just building the whole gamut right here. So under color control. And finally a point control here. And so we'll put the point control on top right here and stroke size, stroke color, contrast, brightness, detail, and evolution. So maybe we'll put that right here. And so for the angle control, we'll call this evolution. Point control up here, we'll call this position, stroke size, um, stroke color, contrast, brightness, detail. Cool, so we have the basic setup. Let's go ahead and lock this right here. And let's go ahead and link some of our properties to this control right here. So they're all under fractal pretty much. So under fractal noise, right? Under contrast, it sets a 782 right now. So we'll set contrast to uh, 782. Hit alter option on the stopwatch right here and pick whip this contrast to the contrast in our controller right here. Um, same with complexity right here. Complexity is set to one point five right now. So it's at 1.5 for detail, pick whip it to our detail. And if I'm moving a little bit fast, feel free to pause the video a little bit um, and rewatch it because this is kind of just mundane stuff here. I was gonna cut it, but I do wanna show you guys um, some of this stuff right here. So we'll pick whip brightness to brightness. So that is done right here. We'll go into the transform right here and under offset turbulence, we'll pick whip that to our position right here. So now our position controls the um, 
offset turbulence. Our evolution, pick up that, alter option, click on the stopwatch, drag it to the um, evolution controller right there. And I believe that is it for this effect right here. If you want, you can always add more control to the fractal noise. Um, so we'll also go to the simple choker right here. We'll set the stroke size to negative 5.3 and pick up the simple choker to that as well. Now, if you want to make the, the controls more intuitive, you'll need to do a little bit of math, some absolute values and stuff like that. Um, stroke size doesn't make any sense to be negative. Um, and so in this case, you can do some math to the controller and pretty much transform it to where it's positive. Um, in this case, using some simple subtraction and stuff like that. But in this case, I won't bore you guys with that. Fill, we'll pick up the color to the stroke color right here and make this white. And so now our detail should be working right here. So if we increase the detail, you'll see we get all this nice kind of like bacteria looking germs, whatever. Um, brightness will work as well. So we control that. Add some more detail to the, to the uh, uh, geometry right here. Contrast will play around with that as well. Um, stroke size works as well. Stroke color works. The evolution will animate this whole thing a little bit. And of course, our precision right here. Now, one more thing we are missing is another slider for scale right here. So we'll apply another one right here. Call this scale. And we'll go into the fractal noise here and go under, I believe, transform scale. Pick whip that to the scale. And that was at 308. And so now the scale works as well. And so this is pretty cool. This is kind of what we want. Let's talk about how to create the kind of steps in this whole map right here. So how I create the step is actually pretty cool. So basically um, for every single layer inside the original layer, um, the, the brightness is increased a little bit. So as we go higher and higher and higher, the brightness increases. And so that will kind of create a stepping effect here. And you'll see what I mean in a second here. So back in the tutorial comp right here, we made a mistake right here. I don't want a brightness slider. Um, I want a offset slider right here. So we'll call it offset. We'll bring it all the way up to the front up here. And under the factor noise brightness, we are going to be changing the brightness here. We are going to link it to the offset slider, but I don't want it to be a direct connection right here. So I'm going to erase this expression for brightness right here. And what I want to do is I want to say, hey, whatever the brightness is, so in this case is a negative 38. Um, so whatever the value is, we're going to add that to our offset right here. So take the value of whatever it is. So right now it's negative 38, take the value and we're going to add whatever this amount is right here. Do an asterisk or times and type in index. So the index is pretty much the, the order of the layer stack right here. So this, this layer right here is index number two. So it's going to take this value plus the offset amount times two. And so you'll get something like that. And so the offset should be like, let's just start off with 20 for now, All right? And so now that we have that done, if we go ahead and duplicate it, right? So now this original map that we had is actually going to be brightness times three. And this one right here is actually brightness times two. And if I duplicate this again, this is actually gonna be offsetted. So um, you keep on doing that and it's going to offset the brightness pretty much. So it's it's offsetting the brightness based on the index. And so brightness times two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so you're creating this kind of offset of the fractal right here and brightness here. And so now you can actually control the offset using this slider right here. And so you can really kind of dial in the look that you're going for and add more um, offset segments right here. Um, and by just, just by duplicating them and then changing the offset amount right here to make it tighter or more broad. So it's pretty cool. And if it's too detailed for you, you can tone down the, the detail to like 1.25 and maybe increase the scale a little bit. Just like that. And you've created this awesome little texture right here that you can pretty much change the evolution and animate and offset the position this way and pretty and pretty much create anything you want here. And if you want, you can go back to the fractal map right here and go into the uh, unlock this right here, unlock that. 
um, and you'll get access to the fractal noise and play around with the fractal type and noise type. And you know, you can pretty much play around with it and get the look that you are going for right here. So this is just a pretty quick way to create some pretty cool uh, topographic maps right here. Again, not sure how accurate it is, but that's pretty much how you do that in After Effects. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have a ton of profession design templates you can customize it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, you can use the promo code DOJO at checkout to save 10% off your order and support the dojos. Check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much how you create a topographic kind of design in After Effects. Use this technique to create other textures if you want. I'm not sure if this is the most effective way to create this type of map right here. Um, there could be a more optimized way that renders a little bit faster, but this is kind of how I created it. Let me know if you have any suggestions or tips in the comments down below. And as always, for more tutorials, feel free to subscribe to the channel. So my name is Vincent Nguyen from The Creator Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.